Hi, welcome to this tutorial with me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can recreate a kind of sticky dynamic simulation. So what we're going to try and create is a sort of viscosity where our dynamic objects um, stick together to a certain extent, and this will depend on the amount of force that we place upon them. So here we are in Cinema 4D, and I'm going to create this from scratch but I'm going to create a fairly simple example of this technique but hopefully it'll be something that you can use in your own projects. Um, first of all I'm going to come up and just add a sphere. With the sphere selected let's set the radius to be 10 and just to speed things up a little bit I'm going to reduce the segments down to 12. Now we've got render perfect active so even though it looks slightly uh, faceted, if we render, it's going to render perfectly. So we can just reduce the number of segments to speed up um, any redraw in the editor. What I'd like to do is create a mass of these in a kind of grid array, but um, I want them to be almost in a honeycomb pattern, so they're as close as possible. Um, and to do this, I'm going to use a cloner object. So with the sphere selected, hold down the Alt key, come to the MoGraph menu, and add a cloner. If we just press O to frame that, you can see that at the moment all of our spheres are distributed along Y using a value of 50 centimeters. I'm going to reduce this down to 10 and I'm also going to increase the count to say 20. If we render, it's fairly obvious that all of our spheres are actually intersecting and we don't want them to do that. What we want to do is stagger them. And to do this, I'm going to use a formula effector. So make sure you've got your cloner selected. Come up to the MoGraph menu, choose effector and add in a formula effector. Now, by default, the formula effector has this funky animation that's created. And you can see that what it's doing is it's using time and uh, animating the scale and the position of our clones based on the time. If we come over to the parameter tab for the formula effector. I'm going to switch off scale. We're going to use position but what we also need to do is um, adjust the actual formula and you find that under the effector tab. In the formula field let's just select the formulas there and what we're going to do is type in here mod for mod, open parenthesis or bracket, ID and the ID refers to the internal ID of the clone and then semicolon and two. So we're going to affect every other clone basically. And if we just click off to accept that, you can see that every other clone is now moved across. And if we come back to parameter, we can adjust our X position. So this is quite a cool way of creating something like a brick wall. You create this and then you can repeat it or if you need to create a honeycomb. So what I'm going to do for my X position value is I'm going to use uh, something around 12. I'm also going to type 12 into the position Z. And now if we come and have a look, you can see that we do have a kind of staggered effect. And if we render, there is probably a very small gap in between, but that's close enough for this example. Let's select the cloner object, switch to transform, and let's just set the color to be white so we can see that a little bit more clearly. In fact, let's select the cloner, come up to MoGraph, and let's just add in a random effector. I'm going to switch to parameter, switch off position, and set color to on. I'm also going to set the blending mode to add. And there we go, so we've just got some different colored spheres. Looks a little bit more interesting. Now we have our two columns of offset spheres. What we can do is select this cloner and we can place this into another cloner and then set that to grid array and we can create a mass of these. Of course, you could um, build this kind of setup um, and then use something such as a volume effector to create some interesting shapes. We're going to keep it fairly simple. So select your cloner, hold down the Alt key, come to the MoGraph menu. Let's add another cloner. Switch to the object tab and let's set the mode to grid array. And for the count, I'm going to set the X to 5, Y to 1, and the Z to 5. Let's set the size to be 100, 0, 100. Okay, so now we have a kind of dense structure made of spheres. We need to make sure that they aren't actually intersecting. Otherwise, when we add our Dynamics tab, 
what will happen is uh, that we'll get a kind of explosive effect where the dynamic objects think they're actually colliding with each other because they're already intersecting and that can cause all of your dynamic objects to kind of fly across the scene. Come up to the scene menu and let's add in a floor object. I'm just going to use this so that we have something to collide all of our objects to. So with the floor object selected, come up to simulation, dynamics, create collider. And as you can see, that adds a dynamic body tag. And if we switch to the dynamics tab, you can see that it's enabled, but dynamics is actually switched off. And what that does is it creates um, a collision object for us. Let's select our cloner object, press E for our move tool, grab the Y axis, and let's just pull this up so it's just above the ground. And we can just check that from the side. Okay, so we need to make our clones dynamic. Now let's select the top cloner first of all and come to the simulation menu, choose dynamics, create rigid body. Again, this just adds the dynamics body tag for us and it sets the tag enabled with dynamics on. If we come down and press play to see what happens, you can see that we do have some dynamics taking place, but we have a problem with collision. Basically what's happening is our cloner object is being treated as one collision object, whereas we would like each of our individual clones to be treated as separate collision objects. That's pretty easy to fix. If we select our dynamics body tag, switch to the collision tab, here we have individual elements and it's currently set to off. If we set this to all, we should have all of our individual elements treated separately. Again, let's come down and press play and see what happens. Okay, so you can see we're certainly getting a different result, but this time each of our individual elements is actually the cloner underneath. So it's still not the desired result. And if we switch off that top cloner, you can see that this is the part that's being treated as an individual element. So there's a simple way to fix that. All we need to really do is move this dynamics body tag and just drag it down onto the cloner, uh, the second cloner in the hierarchy. Let's just enable the top cloner again. Let's deselect so we can see what happens and let's just press play. Okay, and there you go. And you can see this is uh, the desired result so far. So we've basically created a huge cluster of spheres that are now dynamic and each of them is being treated individually. So what I'd like to do is show you a technique that you can use to take uh, this mass of objects and make it so that they kind of stick together. And depending on the amount of force that we apply depends on how sticky it is. So if you threw it at something with a lots of velocity, then it would just break apart. But if you just drop it gently, the whole thing will kind of stay stuck together. To create this effect, we're going to use a force object. So first of all, let's add this to the scene and you can add it from simulation dynamics force. Now the force object actually applies a kind of radial gravity to each of the clones within our dynamics simulation. So in this example, basically each of these spheres will have its own gravity. If we come to the dynamics body tag, we actually have a force tab. And in here we have an include exclude list. So we can actually choose to include or exclude certain forces. And the other forces that we can use um, are under simulation particle. And we can use some of these forces in here and we can use those in this list as well. In this example, we're just going to be using the dynamics force. And as I say, that creates a kind of um, rotational gravity on each sphere. And if you use that carefully, you can actually set up like planetary rotations. Let's come back to the force object and let's have a look at the parameters that we have in here. So we have a strength, a damping, respect, mass, and we also have the option to adjust some fall off. Let's press play and have a look and see uh, the result with the default settings. And you can see that everything drops down. It's happening a little bit slower. And this is because each object has its own force. And you can see that rather than spread out when they hit the ground, they all kind of stay stuck together and they're pulling back in now. And this is the gravitational pull pulling everything together. And this is the basis for our uh, kind of sticky dynamics. Let's select our second cloner. I'm just going to actually reduce the countdown a little bit so that uh, there's 15 
um, everything should happen a little bit quicker. Select the force again. Now what we can do is we can actually increase or decrease the strength. So let's try a really high strength of say 20. And let's just press play and see what happens. You can see that they all pull together before they even hit the ground. And now that everything is kind of keeping its shape. Now we could increase the damping if we wanted to try and stop this um, vibration. Or we could maybe add some friction etc in there. The other thing that you can do is you can also set the strength to be minus. And if we set that to say minus 10, it actually has the opposite effect. So instead of pulling them together, the gravitational pull pushes them apart. And you can see that that immediately starts pushing objects away. So what we'd really like to do is create it so that when objects are a certain distance from each other, they actually stick together. The gravitational pull is that strong that it sticks them together. But if they're um, a tiny bit further away, i.e. they're not really touching, um, then the gravitational pull doesn't take any effect anymore. Um, and then what that means is that as the objects kind of fall apart, uh, they don't stick together anymore. But if they stay kind of close together, then they should stick together. Now we can do that by adjusting the fall off uh, of the force itself. Let's set the strength back to a positive value, and I'm going to set it pretty high around 10 for now. I'm also going to switch off respect mass. Now, you don't need to switch that off. Um, if you don't, then you may need to just increase the strength parameters, but I found that I got more of a satisfactory result with that switched off. And um, because all of these spheres are exactly the same size and shape, then theoretically the mass of them all will be the same anyway. Now, if you do have different size objects and you want to respect the mass and density of your objects, then perhaps you want to leave that enabled. It just means that you might have to use higher strength values. It really depends on the overall size of your objects. Now, the part that we're really interested in here is fall off. At the moment, it's set to inverse square with an inner distance of 50 and an outer distance of 500. So what that basically means is that 50 centimeters away from the axis of each object or away from the um, center of mass, the strength will be... Uh, the maximum amount, in other words, the value that we define up here. And then between this inner distance and the outer distance, that value um, or that strength will fall off using um, an inverse square curve to 500 centimeters away where that strength will be zero. Now we want that strength to remain the same until we reach a certain point and then we just want to cut it off. So to do that we can change the fall off type and the type that we'd need to use for this would be step. We also know that our spheres have a radius of 10. So if we come to our force we can set our inner distance to zero so we know the strength starts from the very center of mass of each of our objects and we need to set our outer distance to a suitable amount. So if we set this to be 20 This should be our 10 centimeter radius and then another 10 centimeters which will join up to any uh, sphere that's nearby. Of course we could set that a little bit higher and a little bit lower but it's probably best to just press play and experiment until you get the result you're after. And also the amount of force that's being exerted will make a big difference. So when we press play the spheres at the bottom will hit with a greater force because that force will kind of be cushioned by the ones above. So the first spheres may fly off and the spheres at the end may tend to stick a little bit more. But let's just press play and see what happens. You can see that they do drop down. So we're not really seeing much stickiness so far in this scene. So what we may need to do is increase the outer distance a little bit, or we may just need to increase the strength. Let's try increasing the outer distance first of all, because if you think our sphere, our sphere has a radius of 10, and then the next 10 to join with the next sphere, that's only just going to reach the center of mass of the next object. So really we need to overlap that a little bit. So let's just take that up to 30. Um, and now if we press play, let's see what happens. Hopefully we should see some kind of stickiness. And there we go. And you can see that it's starting to work. And we have some of these uh, spheres all starting to stick together. Now we could rewind and we can take this down a little bit. So say 25. Um, and you're going to need to sort of juggle these values depending on your scene and how sticky you want them to be. And of course how much force is being exerted. So here you can see they spread a lot more. But we're still getting these kind of groups of them all sticking together. 
And of course, the other factor that's quite important here is the amount of strength. If we set this up high to say 25, then they're going to be pulled together much tighter. So it takes a lot more force for them to come apart. And you can see that we're kind of getting these gelatinous mass here that if you drop this into a metal ball, you could almost create some quite interesting kind of blobby shapes. And don't forget all of these parameters can be animated so you could increase that strength and which will pull them all together later on. So in this example I think that the strength of 25 is possibly a bit high. Let's try something around 15 and let's have a look at the result there. And there we go and you can see that we get a little bit of bunching and then as there's less force uh, more and more of them stick together so that's kind of sweet spot for this particular scene and obviously it really depends on the type of effect that you're after but that's one way that you can create a kind of sticky dynamic simulation so i hope that gives you some ideas for experiments of your own um, it's quite an interesting approach to using dynamics and if you head on over to hellolux.com um, you can grab the scene file that I show here and while you're over there please check out my learn dynamics for cinema 4d training series which is over 10 hours of training in dynamics and I'll go into a lot more techniques in a lot more depth than this quick tutorial but thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time